so i went to delhi and then i went to the place i was like where to stay so there are pgs the moment i entered pg the washroom is dirty it is dirty as hell there is just one bed which has a very dirty bed sheet on it which is thinking and you have to sleep on that so can i get a second Hello everyone welcome back to India's number one pilot podcast where pilots come and share their experiences with all aspiring pilots so if you are an aspiring pilot and you haven't checked out our episode number 1 please do check out and today we are going to discuss about challenges we face during our pilot career so today we have with us captain neha and nilay who will share their experiences with all of you and as you are an aspiring pilot you might be facing the same challenges so we'll discuss how we tackle that problem and make sure you learn from it and resolve it hey and thank you whoever watched the first episode of pilot podcast it was amazing really appreciate it uh, we got a lot of love uh, on on that podcast that's that's awesome and looking forward to making such content for all of you like for in in coming time <laughs> okay so now when you want to become a pilot what's the first thing you do you get the thought like what if i tell this to my parents like how would they react and should i tell them or should i wait or should i ask my friend my relatives to approach my parents and tell them that i want to become a pilot so let's ask captain neha like how did she like what was the first thought when she decided she want to become a pilot so back in 2006 it was the same time when in in the month of march when i was preparing for the cet exams so after 12th exams cet for engineering cet for medical okay so isn't it neat so back in 2006 it was cet for medical as well okay. which was required and uh, there used to be lot of other universities the dean universities for which you had separate cet so i prepared for 10 different cets including maharashtra cet that's so, a lot yeah so basically being from the background wherein lot of relatives are doctors and even cousins are doctors I I was kind of a tunnel vision and there was just doctor and engineer were just two options available you know which I thought it was but yes was not aware that there are any other professions in this world so because and back then google and internet was it at a very very primitive stage we didn't have some smartphones like this where you can just go now how we do you can just google it okay what you have to do to become a pilot and you have like so many videos here yeah it was the okay. time of nokia so, 5800 okay. yeah okay. i had you nokia had, you had 5800 <laughs> i did yes. not I, i had that <laughs> black and white yeah you had a smartphone <laughs> no i big. did not have a smartphone you got a smartphone first yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah seriously yeah, yeah. yeah so, she used to score more than me so <laughs> <laughs> so having said that i just prepared for the medical and uh, i got through so the day the admission had to be reserved so my l- name was there in the list so i was supposed to go for dentistry in mumbai i was getting the admission in the year 2006 and for mbbs it was not in mumbai though it was in i my rank was in 2000s in Uh, the CET and that was the reason I was getting so matter of the fact in the class eleventh she actually fought with my father that why did you ask me to take maths in twelfth okay yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> <I wasn't laughs> which she did <laughs> okay and yeah now what as in I mean why to study for now, maths now it's okay. paying now off it I guess <laughs> now I am thankful that at least I had maths. and i did not drop it just because i wanted to become a doctor so it's having said that yeah so take physics maths and english in class 12 if you are planning on becoming a pilot a bit of a context in there okay and biology yeah she had it because she wanted to 
uh, I mean, she had it in the thought that to become a doctor. Okay, so that's why. But otherwise, for pilots, you need physics, maths, and English. That's just for the context. But considering the medical profession, then medical profession requires a study of about ten years, which is you know MBBS of five years followed by post graduation of another uh, three years, including internship. and thereafter you have to do super specialization which was about more than 10 years of studies and looking at all the cousins i was like yeah there is no back there is no hospital there is uh, at uh, of our own and that was a huge investment and considering the limited seats and everything i was not completely 100% convinced to the fact that yes i want to become a doctor but just because i have to do things in life i have to be independent yeah, woman and that was the reason life, right? why i was i chose to study for medicine so when i got to know that there is a great opportunity in pilot profession look, looking and hearing about this pilot i was extremely fascinated and i was like whatever is my talent and full force and energy i will apply in this profession and i will be successful in this that yeah, i did actually and uh, so i was a kid but uh, i i guess uh, you were uh, what uh, in class 6th or 7th when when dad we, took ha, us ha, to ha, uh, a cessna flight yes, around yes, juhu and, and yeah it was it was it amazing it was a joy ride i mean it wasn't yeah. even back in our back of the thoughts yeah, that yeah. will become Fly pilots space, and no. yeah <laughs> yes yeah. yes how was like i mean how you thought about thought aviation it. and and how was it basically i lived in a locality where there used to be a lot of training aircrafts flying over my uh, yeah. locality okay okay <laughs> 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 because there's this uh, bombay flying club right <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh-huh. there's this uh, bombay flying club so uh, ev- like right now also i see them at around 5 or 6 there's there's one cessna flying uh, around my yes. locality yes. so every day i used to hear them and uh, it made me a bit curious ki what what is it like how it is so that's when it all started and uh, then after 12th i was about to go for this pilot training like i asked a couple of relatives but there was no one to guide me properly and uh, many many of them suggested ki uh, pilots take a long time to get a job so it's not feasible and being from a joint family and not having uh, that much financial stability it's it's not uh, i would say uh, it wouldn't be fair if if they invested everything on a single person because at that time the finances weren't that good mm-hmm. so i went up for engineering and after that once i completed my engineering i was still like fascinated about this pilot thing so after that i applied for the cadet program and then i got through and then great with with this all like today i have a cpl which i did not think i would have congratulations on that but but mm-hmm. what what how was your parents reaction like when you first told them you want to become a pilot yeah. uh so it was uh, like all the extended family members like relatives were so shocked listening to the fact that i don't want to become a doctor and now i want to change the profession to being a pilot because this is something which i am discovering new so dad wanted to become a pilot so he had that thing in his mind in 1980s but back then also there were no jobs so he did not become a pilot and the amount of expenses which was required even back then so he did not so he supported me to continue and start this profession so i got to know for about this profession from his friend's daughter and this is what it is she was going for the pilot training and uh, then i was like yes i will also become a pilot though it was a abrupt decision but uh, at least uh, dad supported me to start with this profession and um, later of course uh, financially it was not possible th- for them to send me abroad but uh, at least could support me to do it in 
India. That was a great. Yeah, I mean, he didn't really hesitate yeah, too much on it. He on he was supportive yeah. for sure. So yes, was, absolutely. It was a great support to at least to the flying, you know, in India and then to go for this profession. So that was uh, the turning point where I did not reserve the seat to become a doctor, and then I let it go. And then mom went to uh, that center in Nair Hospital, but we did not deserve that seat. That great, was great. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Now you would be going back in time and thinking, go oh, how yes. far I have come. Yes, yes, yes. So now I don't regret that at all. I really enjoy every day of being a pilot, and uh, yes, it was a great turning point. Like I remember the first time when I told my dad, like I want to become a pilot. That was in uh, the tenth standard, okay. And uh, he, like, told me that we don't have this much finances. So right now, if you drop it, you do something which is in our financial capabilities. So I was convinced at that time. So I completely uh, left that. And uh, my friends used to tell that uh, pilot is not a safe job, like. you are in the air if something goes wrong you just <laughs> lose everything and stuff like that but after that when i completed my engineering and i told my dad ki now i want to become a pilot and uh, here's this program where you get a job assurance and stuff so it's completely safe even if we take a loan it's it's fine okay so my dad told me ki first you clear the interview if you pass then we'll see then mm-hmm. i was like challenge accepted and i, I cleared the interview <laughs> awesome, and stuff and awesome. then he was like okay now you can great, go and stuff great great that's amazing yeah so, so in the cool. meanwhile basically uh, even you did civil, civil engineering right i mean yep it does how was th- how was it for you <laughs> what for me civil <laughs> engineering did. civil engineering yeah i did develop a technical mind and uh, definitely uh, i look at things i have a technical approach towards looking at things more of logical approach technical approach however you we, yeah that does uh, help in day to day life yes. but career wise no i mean not really because the jobs after civil engineering that Uh, a person would get is about eighteen to twenty thousand salary, which is not bad. But looking at um, the expenses and everything, that's not the way to go. So right after you know it, so right after my uh, engineering, I started working with the family office. My father is also a civil engineer, so yeah, I was working in real estate appraisals and stuff. then i continued working in that field until the age of 28 that's when i decided to become a pilot <laughs> so actually yeah 27, 27. yeah 27 28 yes. so actually how it was is primarily <laughs> yeah, i was part of an airline already and then i my traveling actually increased after that so more of air travel and stuff right so There was this one moment when I had uh, I was in New Zealand and uh, I remember that airport moment precisely there was one ATR landing and the airport fence was really close to the runway and I saw that ATR passing by and it was so I was so close that I could see like people inside and including pilots and stuff and that moment was something that made me feel that i want to become, become a, pilot. a pilot and and <laughs> that is when as as i came back to india then then i yeah, started the journey towards it then all of the things and cleared dgc exams and stuff great what what was your f- what was your parents reaction when when you told them like you want to become a pilot so I've never actually misused the privileges that my parents have given me. Even even if I come home at four o'clock in the morning, they would know that I would not have driven a vehicle drunk. I would not be intoxicated. I would not be doing drugs or anything. So they they believe in my decisions. So there was not not any significant force against it. Okay, they just wanted me to make the decision wisely because. yeah it is a yeah, big investment so correct. so yeah that was so my parents were supportive just it, it was because like 
No half and hard. Being you there as my brother, so definitely it would be a helpful thing for you. Like you would have family support to get into this profession because they have already seen it, me doing it, and then you doing it, and you know how the career yeah, is, the how the progression is, proven, is process right? is yeah, proven, yeah, yeah. and things are comparatively yeah, smoother yeah, compared to. Yeah. the first one going yeah, to that yeah, profession yeah, yeah. so what if if someone like me i did not have anyone in the aviation field and right. uh, i i did work like i did reach out to people and stuff but if someone who is listening to this podcast and wants to start a pilot a career in aviation or to become a pilot and what like if they don't have anyone in their family or, or in their relatives so what advice would you like to give like how to start i would say regarding how to start we are there to for them so the process gets much simpler because we treat our students very uh, right from the first step right from baby steps when it comes to the point you know i would like to give my example like what was back then and that is the reason why i know the pain of going through every step and of course i don't want our students to face the same issues and uh, when i started my pilot training in the year 2006 i first did not know about that computer number verification and then dgc exams dgc exams now there are five papers since i was doing my flying in india there are five papers and by the time i got computer number and there was just uh, one and applied for the exam there was one month left so i was like okay now let's start with uh, the subjects now i don't know which whether i can give all the subjects i was like okay i will do it for all the subjects and then uh, everybody is like okay there are classes in delhi and uh, that is the only place where you could get your exams you know cleared and so i went to delhi and then i went to the place i was like where to stay so there are pgs the moment i entered pg the washroom is dirty it is dirty as hell there is just one bed which has a very dirty bed sheet on it which is stinking and you have to sleep on that i said can i get a separate room because in one room there were three beds with three girls staying there and uh, can i get one separate room i can pay double that room is smaller with one bed in it and that is also you had good pocket room. money okay <laughs> so <laughs> it was instead of 5000 rupees a month i ended up paying 8000 rupees a month and then that was the place which i thought of thing which has a separate bathroom but that is also dirty when you go to for food downstairs then the lady that would offer you is in this much portion okay everything that she would offer you and back then there was no zomato no uh, swiggy nothing that you can order you know subway and yeah. then yeah mcdonald yeah, there was anywhere. there were no apps on there the phone no, back then like it was it okay was, yeah, yeah. yeah no yeah. phone was there phone so was there i guess uh, there was phone but that was only yeah. to call your whatever so 2008 okay, 9 those blackberries and all of those yeah, 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 yeah. those mm-hmm. those mm-hmm. popped up um so android and all was not popular at all back no, in no, time no. Yeah. no it was not and i was like uh, when i when i asked for i remember that particular day when i asked for curd she's like 5 rupees de do to hi ek curd milega 5 rupees de do while me having food she's asking for money for that food i was like i don't want to stay or like i tried to see many pages but all are in the same category then went to this class the instructor is very rude you know extremely arrogant and i was like no this is not happening and there was just one month i don't know which subject to you know prepare i just started preparing then for all the subjects just like that i didn't know like what to study i was in the middle of the uh you know portion because one month was only left and all this mess you cannot even have food on time and not hygienic food and 
you're staying at a very shitty place and i was like where i have come no i don't want to stay there so whatever one month i somehow managed to stay and come back but yeah then i decided myself that i am not going to write all the exams because navigation meteorology technical air regulation technical specific all of them i up- appeared in one month ha huh. <laughs> and then how is it possible i was like i didn't know no one told me okay you go for this subject then you go for that subject so now i at least tell my students go for one heavy one lighter subject prepare for 2 to 3 months and then go for that exam thereafter prepare for technical and air regulation then go for those two exams we have an so exception here the wing engineer <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's possible to clear yes. all the subjects if you if have you the right no 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 <laughs> <laughs> if you are Vigna Jira and your mentor is Dhyar Thakri, you can clear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Then I decided to come back and then I gathered all the study material that is required to get the DGC exam cleared. Then I was like, I am going to focus my attention on first navigation meteorology. Then I completed those two subjects in the duration of three months now there is on demand exam which is at the interval of every month but back then there was exam conducted once every three months and that was on the omr sheet so result used to come one and a half month later than the ex- from the date of the exam and then after there used to be you know the next exam application and the further processes used to happen so i came back and since that day itself i started preparing properly for navigation meteorology then i excelled it and i got amazing scores in navigation as well as uh, in met nav i remember it was 88 and uh, yeah so and uh, that was the reason why i want to really really help students and guide them what has to be done at what time and don't want them to suffer right as you mentioned the arrogant uh, teaching way and stuff yeah but back in time it used to be like that right yes. like uh, back in time children used to get beating from the ch- teachers from in the teachers, in the school yeah. Uh, like yeah yeah with a ruler and a, a scale and uh, yeah, yeah now it's not at all accepted right like shaming shaming people in the in the classroom and stuff it's there is a possibility that some instructors might do that today but me that's being not a from good practice that's though. not a good practice of course now being in an airline and as an airline pilot there is something called as the crm when it comes to the cockpit there is a certain requirement of crm needs met with even if every person is learning even i was there as a junior first officer back in time and now when i am flying with a new first officer then if in case he is missing out you, it is just a thing to mention that this is something which yeah there's nothing do. personal there about nothing it right the the flight it, safety yeah. is at the paramount yes. and yeah and even same thing for the ground subjects if in case there is something which is not known or which is not understood i would explain that and now that is the reason why if in case someone doesn't understand a concept you can play as many times this particular cbt at cntaa as you much you can till the time you really understand it well absolutely so this is something the best advantage of uh, cntaa and the pilot ground school which you can access it from home without going to those shady Yes, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, CNTAA is amazing. Like, um, it's groundbreaking. It's yes. something Indeed. that students can revise n number of times. Students can actually rewind while while they are going through the lessons, and it's pretty much like when you have willingness to learn something. That is, I would say. the best way to learn right and you motivate students on day to day basis and everything by the way you are 
a product <laughs> basically you you cleared your cnt your exams dgc exams with cnt double a so how how did you like honestly nobody does even i did clear my dgc exams in the first attempt uh, with great results but i did study for for three months yeah i was working a bit along with it but yeah i mean i took three months to study and and in my first attempt i cleared all three exams but you did it in like less than a month i came in 2020 but uh i believe August. july i got my uh cpl uh 8th july that was my birthday and yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that was great yes okay and then uh i came back in september, september. 30th yes okay. september september hmm. 30th i came back and then a month l- after that you came back right or or you yes, yeah after that. right you Ooh. came two months after Somewhere that in November, and yes. the whole 2020 there were no dgc exams conducted right yes. or the, the l- yeah first, yeah so that was the first attempt so that was the first attempt so actually when i was training training in the states so the circular came up like the exam is gonna conduct in december so i filled out the form from us itself and uh, i did not start any like uh, preparation for dc exam back in the states because I was like, Ki, once I go to India, I'll take up this coaching class and uh, then I'll continue my studies because uh, navigation being a conceptual subject, it's very important to clear your concepts because it yes. stays with you through yes. your entire career. That's correct. So I came to India and uh, first two to three days I tried approaching uh, various classes which provide this coaching for DEC papers. So I remember like me and my friend, we were ready to go to Delhi and pay them how much ever they asked for uh, to start a new batch or give us a co- crash course or something like that. So when I called them, they were like, we cannot start a new batch for you and uh, you can join the existing batches and uh, we'll try to cover the portion. But uh, that the person whom I was talking on the call didn't sound uh, that uh, convincing so i dropped the plan and then uh, i got to know that uh, nehai is also uh, starting this uh, online ground school and uh, i think i was the first student yes, who yes. like enrolled online ground yes. school yeah. yes so which is on demand yeah, yes yeah. so uh, that's great so i i remember talking to you like i just gave her a call yeah. and i was like yeah, i have uh, like 25 30 days and i need to clear this uh, all all the three yes, papers yes, so yes. i'm ready to putting my work but uh, like if you can cover all the portion that would be great and at that time you just have uh, launched your cnt online yes. ground school and it was I, not even launched it was yes. in a pre-launch state and yes. yeah it was in a pre-launch state and i remember you were you came in november somewhere in 11th yes, of 5th november, november i came and mm-hmm. i enrolled around 10th or 11th, 10th november. 11th of november and then exam was on 9th of december so yes. it was less than 30 days yes and uh, it was the it was in pre-launch state so there were some chapters which were still not in the final stages to put up on the portal and uh, that was the time yeah I was so like, no but i mean he used to study like yes, so back study. in time i only used to look into yes. the like who's doing studies mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Uh, the yeah. student progress monitoring correct, correct, correct. and then i would just look at my screen and he has i would only to find out that he has studied for what 10 and a half hours on hours, on one yeah, day yeah, then yeah, 12 yeah. hours one day like studied, that was something lot, commendable great, great. like i would awesome. i would study for five to six hours a day that that used to be my schedule but you wasted man <laughs> <laughs> like i was just looking yeah. for someone who can teach me and the on on demand mode of this class made the knowledge very accessible to me so i am a morning person so i used to start around 5 30 6 a.m in the morning and uh, like a school i would sit uh, till 12 for navigation so i used to watch these videos mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then uh, i used to like solve the problems later that day so first yeah, six hours of the day i used to consume knowledge 
and then i used to solve sums correct, for correct, like 2 correct. to 3 hours and then i used to study like 2 hours of metrology and 2 hours of regulation correct, so whole correct, days 10 correct. to 12 hours would be just studying because oh i had God. one thing <laughs> <laughs> I have to That's clear this amazing. in this attempt because uh, I am not sure when's the next attempt correct, gonna be. Correct, correct, so correct. there was a bit of pressure from that side and I had something like I need to clear in this attempt. Great, and most great. importantly, the on-demand uh, module, like which I can access the knowledge anytime, that was very helpful. So you could start from the first chapter despite of you yes. had one month left. And yes. you didn't have to start from somewhere in the middle. middle. And uh, you could solve all your concepts. You could go through all the concepts which are required for the later chapters before you could directly jump onto them. Like yes. ADF and DBVR requires you to know about the heading, track, wind yes. and course. But you didn't have to start that all of a sudden and you could start. That's amazing and great job that you yes, dedicated yes. so much time and you were able to make it all the three subjects <laughs> in first attempt. I'm, yes. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. You have made such a wonderful product. So if, if anyone goes through it and if anyone studies sincerely and completes their course, I'm sure that they would clear their exam in the first attempt because it's designed such a way that all your concepts would be clear. So if your concepts are clear, you are going to pass the DC exams. Yes. Along with the concepts, there are several multiple questions which are there after every chapter so that all your doubts get even more clear while solving those questions. And even those questions have explanation also at the bottom once you solve yes. these questions. So, yes, so there's, there's nothing like stopping you. Like if you are there to study, there's everything for you. So moving on, like after this clearing the papers, like you went for your flight training. Okay, yes. so what were the challenges you faced during your flight training? So back in 2006, seven, when I did my flight training, we didn't used to get any kind of schedule that, okay, yes, you have a flight tomorrow or uh, you have a flight at this time. We used to wake up in the morning at six, go to the flight school at seven in the morning and be there try to be in front of as many instructors as we can saying good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone whoever we bump into and then we used to wait for our turn to come for flying there used to be about 60 to 80 students in the flight school back then and it used to even take sometimes a week or 10 days of not flying there and just going to the flight school so the flying used to be Kind quite uh, challenging back then and uh, then limited number of aircrafts and uh, that was the thing and the aircrafts in to start with there were just 152s then later on there were 172s many right. were there right. but uh, initially it was uh, your struggle. flight school had that thorp as well right <laughs> that was a low wing small aircraft yeah, yeah. okay anyway yeah. yes 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 so yeah i mean getting flying was the was a main, challenge yeah main challenge yes. and apart from that it was apart from that oh the flying initial part the all was slow later on when you get so low then after you get released and then again you you know start flying by yourself that is when the flying speed would pick up so then the hours were you know i could build hours like how you do hour building so that's uh, so you could do hours and then you can go so low on uh, you know cross country but then there the cross countries in india are like not fancy places like mm -hmm. you used to go where there are 737 or 320 landing ahead or behind you and then you try to keep wake separation here to go to even one airport which is controlled we were not allowed to go to because there used to be a lot of clearances which we had to right, take. Right, right, right. Absolutely. But there is no looking down at uh, flying from India either. Definitely it's preferable to do mm -hmm. flying from the US. Okay. You get to do real instrument flying right yeah you, that's true. i mean most of the um the flights that we used to do solos we would file ifr flight plan right, for right. each of those mm -hmm, okay mm -hmm. and it is as easy as just going on this okay and press a button file and it's filed 
yeah that's we that's had to easy file like the entire hard copy yeah. flight plan send it to right. so many atr traffic right, controllers right 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 absolutely there, so but again mm. even india is i believe like third largest uh, aviation market and even flight schools will improve and are yes, improving are day improving. by day They're right though now. the infrastructure yeah. is not as big as that of the us yes. like yes we both have flown from the us it is amazing without True. a doubt but there are mm, people that wanna become a pilot they are ready to put in hard work and they are yes. ready to p- do everything that is required like yes. you did right like you yourself uh True. the there was not too much liberty on spending when you became a pilot True. right True. so it so you chose to become a pilot from india Correct. and there are people like that so who yeah. want to become pilots and and so d- i won't actually look down yeah, or yeah, at, at flying from india part. i yeah. learned uh, learned my myself there after skills you yes. have to really you know put in all your effort and to know it by yourself so apart from the instructors yes instructors are there to guide you but mainly lot of learning part comes from your self development of yes the skills you which you pilot, need like to become a pilot yes yes uh, i mean flight training challenges different flight schools different uh, countries different challenges are there like in my opinion um uh, s- like aspiring pilots should either choose india to fly from or or the us because we have flown from the us she has flown from india yeah flying from india definitely saves some money but flying from us is is completely different ball game then in the us when we fly right it's mainly skills focused training primarily in india it's mainly knowledge focused training True. right like indian pilot training is dgca exams are difficult in the us the fa written tests are not so difficult right what we used to study for fa tests in 2 to 3 <laughs> days right uh, but at the same time how concerned we would be before every check, check ride right. L- mm-hmm. right so that's the difference so in the us it's your skills are honed really well in india your knowledge is honed really well okay so knowledge you gain the right knowledge honed might not be the correct word for it now when you take those skills from the us and knowledge from uh india, india or cntaa <laughs> <laughs> okay yes you get best of both the worlds right and True. you're really True. good at it it not only helps you during the pilot training Definitely. but it also helps you when it comes to airlines other assessments and everything i agree like for example and also pilot training i feel sorry to no, interrupt no. but pilot training i feel is skills knowledge and attitude okay so when you start pilot training the thought that you have that i know many things you really feel that this is a learning curve and that belief is broken that that i know many things there is so much more to learn to is is the belief that you develop and it's a huge self development process as well like when we went to the us we adapted to different society and and like mm, cultures and and yeah so so that is great about pilot training right it's so back in uh, when i did my flight training now in india also if you ask any trainee pilot they wouldn't have done any arnav approaches whereas i'm happy that you have done arnav approaches in us we used to do it so every day we <laughs> have done it it was the easiest one to do <laughs> this is the arnav approach which i have done for the first time when i'm in an airline now so maybe a year ago i have did for the first time so this is how it was so that's great the quality of training is amazing in us 
so for us the most uh, difficult or most the challenging phase of training would be the private pilot license because when you are flying your first flight okay it's it's good that you are seeing the view and instructor lets you enjoy your flight but moment the next flight you uh, start on learning basic radio calls uh, basic uh, handling of the uh, aircraft and initially yeah. you you feel like oh i am enjoying and stuff mm-hmm, everything mm-hmm. but as lessons pass like first lesson second lesson third lesson there's so much to, to like mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, coordinate mm-hmm, with mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. have to think of everything mm-hmm. and if you make one mistake or something then instructor is there oh you made this mistake okay Right, yeah, it's like initially if say there are 10 responsibilities in an aircraft as a pilot probably instructor will start with giving you two or three okay and then he'll keep on increasing the number there comes a point when he is doing nothing and you are doing everything and every time one step is uh, like he increases the difficulty by one step like he he stops doing one thing then yeah it's a learning curve right <laughs> and yeah that's 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 really taken in a way gradually in the us for sure it's not like all right take the aircraft go <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> they make us uh, like they they prioritize on training on the emergency situation so they uh give the trainings for power on and power off stalls correct, that is correct, like correct. during your take off and landing if the aircraft stalls what you need to do that is the most important thing when you're going solo correct 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 because correct. you are just fresh like 20 30 hours right. on a plane and right, if you right. go solo you need to know these steps correct if if the plane stalls during True. uh landing what to do and stuff okay as well as you have to maintain the speed within plus minus 10 knots of what you are supposed to or you are assigned as well as you have to maintain your heading so you have to maintain the aircraft in all three dimensions get the pitch right get the thrust yeah, right get is, so all yes, the aircraft yes, management and yep. making sure you are at the right place yep, yep, and yep, going yep. in the right yeah, direction yeah, is yeah, yeah, all yeah. to be taken care yeah, by aviate you. navigate communicate all three yeah. things yeah. basically even it comes to as you mentioned aviate is maintain your altitude because it's a three dimensional thing right flight while driving path. yeah, yeah while driving you are while driving you are on a two dimensional thing you're not going to go down or, or up, up huh? in in here <laughs> you've got to maintain the altitude you've got to maintain the air speed mm-hmm. then you've got to maintain mm-hmm. the heading right then you have to m- yeah, yeah either heading or the track right mm-hmm. and end up in the right di- right direction right. and or to the right destination otherwise it's getting lost right so aviate navigate communicate is a boeing term for airbus it is fly navigate communicate <laughs> it's a general <laughs> term please yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. uses it I am it's, just it's, it's it's a general <laughs> aviation term they have to distinguish so yes. it is the same thing yeah hmm. in the us but when we used to uh, like fly cessna we used to like make the airbus hold for us <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah those those night time uh landings were amazing like the, all the allegiants would line up and self declare and land back to back yes. i'd be like on uh niner right and yeah so it's this was i guess second last flight okay i was doing a night solo yeah, and um there were legit five six allegiants on the monro okay <laughs> they're doing vfr monro okay monro is arrival visual yeah yeah, yeah monro oh. is arrival that okay. is their transport N- yeah, arrival so, oh. so monro is actually um not for the airliners okay airliners have instrument arrivals which is uh, n- n- uh star okay Th- those are there but Monro was VFR arrival mm-hmm. okay so it was specific to that airport mm-hmm. okay now monro is something that you would come from the n- uh, north okay no uh, with south heading southern heading okay then you would join the circuit pattern okay for um, which runway for niner uh, left mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so circuit pattern for either niner left or 27 mm-hmm. right depends mm-hmm. okay so that night particularly it was niner left and uh, niner right those were operational okay there was niner center as well but uh, we were doing circuits on 
Nine are right, and the allegiance were landing self declared. Okay, I could legit see that there is one on the downwind, okay, one on the base, okay, and there are three more on the finals, and one is leaving the runway now. Self declared is something which is there is no air traffic controller, and they control all those aircrafts in the pattern which is mentioning are controlled by the aircraft themselves keeping the visual separation with the aircraft ahead of them yeah so, uh, so it was a class charlie itself. airfield just yeah, it was a class charlie but at 11 o'clock it would turn into class golf because mm. um uncontrolled. yeah it was uncontrolled so atc would leave at that time so sometimes they used to extend it but usually uh, you would hear on the node uh, okay. and um, mm-hmm. aid us that okay 11 30 it would be mm-hmm. class mm-hmm. golf mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Another yeah. most challenging part would be the short field landing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so short field landing is like the instructor will tell you to aim for a point on the runway and your wheels of the plane should touch at that point or within 400 meters ahead of that point. So that is feet. feet. 400 feet. feet. Correction. 400, 400 feet, feet or two stripes. Two stripes. Yeah okay yeah, yeah. so that is the uh, and if if your wheel Two touch line yes is, is 400 feet right yes I for i guess yeah so that 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 was the most uh-huh. so that was the it depends on uh, runway as well length. it's it's yes runway length so that was the most difficult thing yeah. in in the private pilot uh thing because even in commercial it was but diamond but was diamond was easy, easy flying <laughs> Cess- cut the rod a little it, set, yes. right? but not Cess- the- Cessna requires skill yeah. so it was very difficult to do a short field landing and Cessna with winds yeah. if yeah. winds yeah. are yeah. like yeah. crazy yeah. then yeah. then you will have a hard yeah. time yeah. but that was the most difficult thing Right, according right, to right. me so do, do you get training for the short field soft field landing so basically or? like if you say Patna then Patna is a short field and it's not the only short field, uh, you know. So now that short field terminology has changed to performance limited airfield. Because if it is a short field, if you say for Airbus, then that will, uh, 320, then that will not be short field for ATR. So it's mm-hmm. called as performance limited airfield. So for, it depends on that type of aircraft. Mm-hmm. So like if you say Patna, Jammu, then Dehradun, th- these places which have the shorter runway than a stipulated period uh, than a stipulated length like you consider it as uh, number for every aircraft type it is different 7000 or less is considered as a short uh, performance limited for 320 so in that case there is a requirement of a route check by the captain thereafter the first officer so it is all let down in the operations manual of that particular airline so that is all different and it has to meet with the requirements of the dgca or of course so uh, in that case if in case slightest of float by the pilot mm-hmm. you need to identify and immediately go around if you do not if, if you continue to float and still land you're obviously that particular pilot is obviously jeopardizing the safety and then there could be a safety meeting and uh, there could be you know even dgca can infringe into it and ground that pilot so such things need to be absolutely they are intolerable things to land beyond a certain yeah, it's point about safety a pilot's job is to remain within yeah. yeah yeah keeping safety at paramount that is pilot's primary job so it's so no matter yeah. what i make sure that for that flight it has to land at the aiming point marker no matter what so your you uh, you need to adopt the technique of landing in such a way that you have to land there irrespective of the winds irrespective of the weight irrespective of the external conditions yeah, that yeah. that so brings that, that brings to one uh, 
जजमेंट ऑफ पैसेंजर्स यूजली दैट देयर इज लैंडिंग बहुत अच्छा था या लैंडिंग तो बहुत हार्ड था ओके सो सो फॉर पायलट्स एक्चुअली इट इज लैंडिंग इज अ गुड लैंडिंग विथ मल्टीपल मेट्रिक्स सो देर आर डिफरेंट मेट्रिक्स वेदर द एयरक्राफ्ट डिड लैंड ऑन द सेंटर लाइन और नॉट एंड एट द करेक्ट एट द करेक्ट करेक्ट एमिंग पॉइंट मार्कर्स वेर यू इंटेंडेड टू टच डाउन एट ओके and then the third one comes that what was the g of the landing load right factor. what was hmm. the load factor of the landing like yes yeah, so so that is really <laughs> something <laughs> that everyone would judge a landing only on the basis of how hard so or how soft was the pa- um, landing need to be taken into account like yeah. uh, you know when you think of or uh, that particular uh, of course it depends on the type of aircraft the technique would differ of course even in that aircraft depending on what engine it is the technique would differ okay. if it is 320 321 it will vary slightly and uh, what is the weight of the aircraft at that on that day on that it will change right, that is why what is the limited, right? what is the uh, you know the winds according to that it would yeah. uh, change then Uh, depending on yeah, the, what is the upslope, like whether yeah, it is yeah. upslope, upslope on the runway, yeah. or if there are gusty conditions in the afternoon because of thermals, the land gets heated. Like especially Hyderabad, Bangalore, Nagpur, these places where it, there are a lot of thermal activities because of that airport being inland. So, in that case, then uh, if you consider monsoon in Bombay, yeah, is another terrible runway. thing. wet runway where there are so many you know uh, runway excursions have happened so in that case the techniques need to be varied as well as because of uh, you know night time fog illusions there are mm. uh, you know techniques you need to know what you will perceive it and what is actually coming to you so these things you have to keep in mind before you know what where you are going to flare and where you are going to how much you are going to flare when you are going to reduce the thrust so that's uh, that develops with experience but to come to the point and really improve yourself at every landing that you do is a pilot's skill yes. so yeah it's it's same for us like for in private pilot like uh, we used to get nervous when we were asked to do a short field landing but as we enter to a commercial pilot license we are confident that we could do it like no matter any time any conditions so with experience your skill definitely improves yeah, for, yeah that's right? right so as a jfo i remember when some thermals used to be there i used to be like oh my god this is this is too much to handle and now mm-hmm. with 4500 hours of experience now can deal with it like in the other yeah. day but yeah. still of course caution needs to be taken but now it is manageable and makes it more easier compared to before yes i agree that pilot training is challenging and pilot job demands a lot yes that's absolutely right but if you put in that much effort your lifestyle as you get that seat in the cockpit in an airline it's all worth it so the perks are amazing you get to travel whatever is your your lifestyle and your day to day life is not 9 to 5 job you can you know uh, sometimes you have to wake up in the morning or in the afternoon or sometimes you have a standby if you don't get pulled out it's kind of off so you get to fly and travel to different places wherein you don't have a monotonous life as well as the salary is handsome though there is some restriction in covid times and there is some reduction in covid times but it will come back to normal as soon as things are improving so will it though <laughs> <laughs> when will it yes <laughs> yes it will it will so one, hmm. one thing i like about a career like as a pilot is like once the engines are off you don't have to work outside of the cockpit yes, like as right. in corporate job i have seen people like sitting with their laptop late night and then early morning even yes. off days they work yes, but yes, it, yes. as a pilot you just turn off the engine your work is done 
because of the fddl you have a you know certain number of hours that is the maximum number of hours which you can fly and otherwise you have rest so having said that yes of course uh, you get great travel perks if you are a pilot you get to fly free as well as your family gets to fly with a minimum you know travel fees and uh, the travel ticket yeah, it, for, varies yeah it varies airline to airlines airline right airline, yeah 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 i mean most airlines right. do have certain uh, yeah, perks. programs like that so that's that's a great thing and yes i do enjoy every single day flying in an airline and yes i'm grateful for this profession do you think everyone should become a pilot so everyone who should become a pilot or everyone should become a pilot so if you are financially capable and you have willingness to work towards this profession as a pilot and you must possess the right amount of knowledge skill and attitude so these are the things which are required to be a pilot yes of course you cannot have if in case something is you know financially if it, it's not possible for you to support in that for that particular pilot profession in that case you can even choose any other profession put your heart and soul into it and i'm sure you would excel it right <laughs> yeah i mean honestly the answer i feel is we found it to be the right fit for us so all of us chose to become a pilot not everyone should become a pilot <laughs> whoever has real willingness towards it should definitely consider it and uh, go for it once you decide to go for it definitely go all in and make the best out of it one thing that is there yes pilot training is expensive so do not stress your parents into a financial stress so make sure that it is within their reach to do so okay or within your own reach to do so if you are supporting your uh, pilot training and as long as those things are in place as long as you are medically fit as long as you know that you can continue the drive all the way until you become an airline pilot and even after that okay yes you should definitely become a pilot that's that's what my answer would be i guess not i guess yes that's what my answer would be and there's two things like discipline and consistency yeah. if if yeah. you if you put in efforts continuously and you are disciplined about it there's no doubt you are not going to be successful you'll going to be successful you'll be sitting in that cockpit and flying airbus boeings okay but uh, what i wouldn't recommend people to choose pilot as a career based on the glamour which it brings okay so a part glamour is a part of a pilot career like you get to visit places all the five star hotels and stuff but seeing that if you decide to become a pilot hmm. it's not the right attitude to Correct. go in right? i agree i agree i totally agree one more thing to add to uh, what chintan said that uh, yes uh, apart from these perks you would the moment if you are a passenger then you walk in the at the airport then of course you look up to pilots as you know the great of uh, people who are able to handle so many things when you go to the cockpit for the first time in an airline aircraft cockpit these major jets you will see so many buttons and then that time it is overwhelming that how would a pilot be controlling so many things at the same time so yes you do look up to them but you would only judge them when the landing is correct and if in so apart from that there are a lot of other things which a pilot does so it is very important that pilot lands well all right yep i see the speaking energy go down so now let's let's uh, wrap it up if you have stayed until now great we are looking forward to see you in the next episode and it was amazing speaking with you That's all it. and conversing with each other okay 
yeah like share subscribe we have tried to provide information as much as possible in this episode further information in the next ones all right bye 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 see you in the next one hope you like this video bye bye see ya looking forward to see you in the next one bye